everybody. Welcome to Fabulous Living with Angela Jones. So happy to see you guys. Happy Sunday. And as you can see, this is a very special edition of the show because my mama's in town. Woo! My mom is here for the next, for two weeks. This is her. She's been here a week already. So it's been so awesome having her here and sharing all the family stories and recipes and having girl chat and all kinds of stuff this week. So it's been fabulous. So, why don't we say a little something to the peoples? Hello, it's so good, good to be here with my children and my grandchildren and to have lived here for 37 years to come back and be with the family is wonderful with everything that's going on now. So it's a blessing and we enjoy doing things together and yes. to cook today is awesome. It is. It is. So it's Sunday, y'all. So we are doing a Southern Sunday supper, but it's a special version of it because since my mom is leaving on the 18th, she's leaving on Friday, Juneteenth is on the following day. I thought that we would make this like a smash up, you know, like a mashup of a Sunday supper and a Juneteenth celebration, which are essentially the same, one and the same, because this is how we get down in the South on a Sunday anyway. Yes. So just for people, just really quickly, I put an extensive history about Juneteenth on the blog, but Juneteenth is actually a celebration of the true, the true Independence Day uh, for slaves that occurred in 1865 in Galveston, Texas. Mm -hmm. Slaves were actually free, as we know, in 1863, in January of 1863. But the people of Texas <laughs> did not get word until two and a half years later, on June 19, 1865. So hence, we celebrate June 10th as the true day that slaves in this country all slaves were truly free. So it's a big celebration, especially in the South, but now it's vibrating throughout the country. So, of course, in our culture, in black culture, we don't do anything without having a lot of food. <laughs> That's what we do. It's yeah. important to us to have a lot of food. So Juneteenth is usually barbecue because barbecue is a big deal in Texas. So you've got to have barbecue on the menu. Um, you got to have collard greens, which my mom is going to show you guys how, and me, how to make traditional collard greens because I don't make them because I don't eat them. But we're going we're gonna to make them today. <laughs> we're going to make them today. My mom's going to show us how to do that. We're going to have, a, she's going to prepare some southern style cornbread. Not the sweet stuff that I made, y'all. This is going to be like real cornbread that you eat with collard greens. <laughs> and I'm going to prepare some baked macaroni and cheese and strawberry lemonade because it was very significant to have a, a lot of red food on the menu because red symbolizes the blood that was lost while our people were enslaved. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have some, I'm gonna make some fresh strawberry lemonade. So those are the three things that we're gonna make, but we're gonna have a full table. We have barbecue chicken thighs, um, the things we listed here, what else are we making, Mom? Oh, my mom baked three coconut pies because that's something that my brothers are joining us for dinner. That's something that all three of us love. So we're having some homemade coconut pies, potato salad. Uh, we're going to do a little, as my mom said, they used to have um, uh, like a side of tomato, cucumber, onion salad just to have something fresh on the plate. And that's also still the colors of um, with, the red. with the red, the green, the black, the, the whole pan, the whole, you know, African flag. And what else are we having, Mom? Oh, green, fresh green beans. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's everything. everything. Yes, that's everything. That's everything. Oh, and we're having watermelon also. We're going to have some watermelon, too. It's a lot of red, a lot my of red, hence I'm wearing red. It's my mom's favorite color. So we're going to get right into this, and we're going to start off. My mom's going to get the greens. Let's start off with the greens first, and then I'm going to, while she's doing that, I'm going to be getting my roux going for the mac and cheese, and then I'll show you guys um, 
what the consistency of that looks like and get the cheese added. And we're just going to kind of tag team today. So, Mom, you're up with the greens. Explain the greens. Okay, we have about two pounds of fresh greens uh, that... Um, oh, come on over this way a little bit. Yeah, she didn't say. There you go. Okay. We have two pounds, about two, maybe two and a half pounds of fresh cut collard greens. And uh, you don't want to cut them too large or too small because if you cut them too large, then it's going to look like you just pull the leaves out of the garden. We don't want that. Then the, if you, the smaller you cut them, then the shorter time you have to cook them. And you can always prepare your vegetables to the um, tendency that you want them. Sometimes we over tend to overcook our vegetables, and that's cooking all of the vitamins and the nutrients out of our vegetables. That's something that's been in our culture for years. If you cook something and it's still um, green, back in the day with my grandparents, it was like, oh, that's not done, Roxy. So you have to let that cook a little longer. Okay, I let it cook a little longer. But as I grew older, and um, then I found out differently. You know, once I had my own family, I could prepare foods the way that uh, the nutrient was be the, would be there for them. Okay, so I have these greens prepared, and uh, I've already pre-cooked the smoked turkey. So I'm cooking them in smoked turkey instead of pork, because so many people don't eat pork, because our younger, our older son doesn't eat uh, uh, pork anymore. So they're going to be seasoned with uh, turkey, smoked turkey, and I'll add some salt and uh, olive oil to that and let them cook. And that's that for that. So we're going to get these greens on and... Rock and roll. Okay, as you can see that we have the pot on the stove and this is the broth from where I've already cooked the turkey, the smoked turkey. So I'm going to add the greens to the pot. So you just want to add them in and they're going to cook down. We don't need a lot of water. And another shortcut is you can always use a vegetable broth to cook your smoked mm. um meat and or whatever kind of meat you're okay, in. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, that's yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Vegetable broth, chicken broth, any of those broths. Okay, Plus one so if somebody was a, vegan, you could do it with a yeah. vegetable broth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's that a, makes sense. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. And it has, then it adds flavor also. Right. So you do this. That's something I didn't do years ago because you you would cook the salt, the salt pork. Uh-huh. So get rid of this. And then I have the, the pre-cooked turkey meat. And I'm going to debone that and add it to the pot of fresh greens. I'm not going to throw the bone away because the bone has the flavor in it. So I'm going to add the bone to that. Just deboning this, scanning all because this is flavor here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Mom, how long did you uh, cook the smoked turkey? The smoked the turkey, it, it, about an hour, because you want to fall off the bones like gotcha. this. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And fall off the bones. And you did it in water? Was that water that you did it in? That you cooked yeah, it in? Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. Okay. Did water. Cool. And then I'm gonna add this bone to this side. Let's see all the, and I will eat the turkey. We know. I, I do love meat. <laughs> I'm not trying to have too many meals without meat if I don't have to. And this is the, the wing off the turkey, which has a lot of flavor in it. So that's like a treat to have all the turkey meat in there. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn the pot down some. Okay, to, what do you want it on? That's what I have it on there. It was on eight. Okay, let's turn it halfway. Okay. About four. four. Got it. Put that on about four. Okay, then I'll, um, my salt and pepper. Don't need a lot of that. Because when you're cooking, cooking for other people, this is so sea salt, so I'm going to add about, uh, that's about a teaspoon of sea salt. It's better to be on the safe salt to have le less, less salt. And then I'll add some extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Let's say about a quarter of a cup 
of virgin olive oil. It doesn't have to be extra virgin. But, um, so that's the greens. You want the pepper, Mom? Black pepper? No. No. Okay. So that's that. So this will, this will cook about, cook down about approximately 45 minutes. Okay, so what I have here is the base for my cheese sauce for my mac and cheese. I just took a stick of salted butter and I added it with some flour and then I added some half and half. So it's kind of thick now, but that's okay. We can play around with that. Let's add some cheese. And for cheese, you really want to use um, hand grated cheese. It's easy to just grab the shredded cheese out of the bag you know, because it is quick, it's convenient, right? But I hand grated this cheese and I used cheddar, Colby, uh, mozzarella, and uh, sharp cheddar. So I used four different cheeses. It works just fine with just cheddar. It works just fine if you just want to do two cheeses, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to use four different cheeses because that's what I usually do. But trust me, it's still good if you just use one or two cheeses. And you can be flexible with the cheeses, but my mom always just used mild, right mom? Mild mm -hmm. cheddar, mm -hmm. and then she used sharp sparingly because sharp is very dominant, has a very sharp taste. Yeah. So we're gonna add the cheese and we're gonna get this cheese sauce going. And we're gonna save, reserve some for the top of the mac and cheese. We're probably not gonna use all of it because I'm not making a huge pan because my brothers don't love mac and cheese the way we do, so. And since that got a little thicker, we're gonna add some more half and half and get this to thin out and be the consistency that we want. Yeah, because if it's too, if it's too thin, it's gonna, it's gonna tighten up once it's bacon. Mm-hmm, exactly. So we'll get this. Yeah, it's better than having loose. Yep, it is, whoops. and cheesy and I love really to make a cheese sauce my mom used to put I don't know you still do do you still put eggs in your mac and cheese because traditional southern mac and cheese you put eggs in it mm -hmm. but you know this new generation mine we're doing it like without well some of us of course are doing it with and then it, eggs with, with the eggs and eggs are more texture exactly also. exactly mm-hmm I like it either way uh we love mac and cheese so we want to see how it's already that consistency is changing. That's what we want. I think you made a little more milk. Yep, I am. We're going to just get this stirred uh, down first. And let's start to see, flavor it. So, Mom, can you have sea salt, please? So, I'm just going to. And one thing you don't want is you do not want macaroni and cheese that is not, does not have enough salt in it. Woo, it's the worst. <laughs> It is the absolute worst. So just sprinkle it in some sea salt. Of course, again, as I always say, you do that to taste, whatever you like. But we like our mac and cheese to be flavorful, so we're gonna probably, you know, add a little more. I'm gonna give it a taste in a little bit. And one tip is you wanna add pepper, but add white pepper. Don't add, my mother never did black pepper. Because you hate to eat, see something white and then you see these big specks of pepper in it. And I love pepper, but you don't want to see that in it. Now, I am going to add black pepper to it as I'm, after it's baked when I eat it, but you don't want to see it in it when it's baked. My mom always did that. She always had, she always did it with white pepper. And I'm going to go ahead and just add a little more salt because I know it's going to need That's it. A lot. Yeah. It's a lot of sauce, so. And then like I said, we, we, you know, we're layering flavors here. So let's see what we got here. Not bad. Okay. Not bad, but I didn't even put that much sharp and I taste it. So I'm gonna just thin it out a little bit. Thanks, Mom. Thin it out some more. And this is probably going to be more than we need for the pan that we're using, but that's okay because you can freeze this sauce mm -hmm. and just have another bat make another mac batch of macaroni. So I'm gonna keep this stuff going. Okay. 
okay? And I'm gonna keep perfecting this and mom's gonna go ahead and get the cornbread going. And then I'll show you guys the finished result of the consistency and everything as we pour it into the pan and then we add our layer of uh, freshly grated assorted cheeses. Okay, and then I already have some pasta, as I said, that I've already cooked. It's two cups of uncooked pasta that I've already boiled al dente. One tip is that you don't want to over boil your macaroni because your macaroni is going to continue to bake once it's in the oven. So you don't get mushy macaroni. You want it to be al dente. So you only want to cook it for about seven minutes. And see this, see how beautiful that sauce is? It is. Thank you, mother. It's nice and smooth. And you see that little bit of pull with the mm -hmm. cheese? So we're gonna pour this all over. The pasta. Yummy. And then pour a little more. So we want to be very ooey gooey. Creamy. And creamy, exactly. And creamy. So I'm gonna kind of blend you, it in. You buttered that dish too, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, this is a um, dish that I already buttered so that it won't stick. And then it also adds another layer of flavor too. Those corners. This looks really yummy. Thank you very much. I'm just gonna make sure it's all down in there and then we can come back through and make it pretty. But yeah, we want to make sure it's all the way through there. So we want to stir it in. Yep, we got it. Got it. Let's get it all. Blend it in. Now, yeah, now it's all coated. You just want to make sure it's all coated with the cheese sauce. And then we're gonna put some more cheese sauce on. And then we're gonna put our layer of the reserved cheese in there. Okay. And actually I thought there was gonna be some sauce left, but it's not. <laughs> It's not a really big pan, but it's, it's going to be full pretty much to the top, so. Okay. And this side looks like it's not as full. I'll fill that in. Okay. And I know some people like to layer cheese in between and all of that, but... I don't do that anymore because there's so much cheese in the cheese sauce. Mm -hmm. It's enough, it right? It is. I think it's enough. And then we're just gonna sprinkle some on top. Some of the reserve. Let's put that. This is gonna be so good, y'all. And I'm telling you, it's worth it to go ahead and grate, you know, to grate your own cheese. Because it's so, you can even, even the texture in my hand as opposed to getting the pre, shredded kind, mm -hmm. you know, you feel that dryness because there's some, there's a, like some kind of powder or something they put on it to keep it, mm -hmm. you know, fresh. Some, yeah, fresh, so to speak. But this is so much better. It's so soft in my hand. So this is gonna have a really good melt. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's enough. Some people like to put breadcrumbs on top. My mom never did that, so I don't do that. I've done it a few times, but I don't really, yeah, it's never been our thing. So we're going to put this in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour at about, um, on three, about 375. It's fine. Excuse me, mom. I'm going to slide this in and we already have some chicken in. So I'm going to have to shift the chicken around and then we'll get the mac and cheese in. And then my mom will get the, the cornbread started. Um, 
Okay. Yeah, I might be done. Because I have to go back in. Okay. Yeah, it's up. Put sauce on. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank and there we go. I'm back now to prepare the cornbread for the collard greens. Okay, in this bowl I have, um, I'm using, go back, the Indian head, old fashioned stone ground yellow cornmeal. So in this bowl I have measured one cup of uh, the cornmeal, one cup of plain flour, one fourth cup of sugar, three teaspoons baking powder, one teaspoon salt, one cup milk, one egg beaten, one fourth cup oil. The liquid ingredients are all here, including the egg. So I add this to cornmeal mixture. All of it at one time. It's all going in the pan at the same time. That's how it goes. And let's back up just a little bit. I have um, prepared eight by eight bacon pan. So I'm going to we want to stir the bread. Once we get that all mixed up, and it's going to be mixed well. Once we do that, make sure everything from the bottom is coated. There we go. And this is going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on your oven. So bake it at 350. Looks good, Mom. I think that's all there. Real cornbread, people. Real Southern cornbread. In the oven, you can pour some hot butter on it, or you can serve it with butter. Everybody doesn't like butter on their cornbread. Now we have the oven already set. I'm going to mm -hmm. place this in the oven. Okay. All right. Right next mm -hmm. to the Right. So that's it for the cornbread. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Mother. That's going to be delicious. So next up. I'm going to make the lemonade, strawberry lemonade. So I'm going to transfer them to these carafes, transfer it rather to the carafes. And let me um, get some water. And what I already have here, guys, is I already pureed in a blender five cups of diced strawberries. So really two pints of strawberries. I just diced it. I did a rough dice and I put it in the blender. And um, added it to the pitcher. And now um, we're just going to do our... Get some sugar. I'm sure I'm going to need more. <laughs> and get a glass. So we can do a little tasting. See how it tastes. And then I'm going to need a spoon. And I think we're good to go. Yes. Here we are. 
I'll just put that there. Okay. So, I already, like I said, this is uh, two pints of strawberries, rough dice, place them in the blender and, t and put it on pulse until it's like the consistency, until it's pureed, until it's completely pureed. Okay? Then I squeeze the juice from about eight lemons and place that in the pitcher as well. So that's already in. So now I'm going to add some sugar. And again, sugar is very, just like, like salt and pepper. You know, it's about how sweet you want it. And I like a nice blend between sweet and tart. So I'm going to put in, that was probably about half a cup of sugar to start. I know I'm going to need more than that, people. But that gives us a good start. Good start. Yeah, that's decent. Yeah. Add more water. Then I'm going to add some more lemon juice. So I'm, I'm using some constant lemon juice concentrate just because I didn't have as many lemons as I thought I did and I have a lot of strawberry puree. So I'm going to add some lemon juice just to kind of balance everything out so we have a nice blend of sweet and tart because it is lemonade. Okay, let's just do a quick taste. I know it needs more sugar, but I'm just gonna do a quick taste anyway. Mm, not bad. And see, it's good to just start with a little bit because the strawberries are obviously pretty sweet. Mom, do you want to taste? Sure. <laughs> I'm going to add some more lemon juice. Yeah, just a little lemon juice. Mm -hmm. and, that, and a little more sugar. And a little more sugar. I knew my mama was going to say more sugar because she likes her stuff so <laughs> Like she is. <laughs> okay. You're welcome, Mom. <laughs> Okay, so that last little bit should do it. If not, I have some more lemon juice. We can add more. I'm going to add a little more. Just a little more water, too, because I do want it to be the consistency of lemonade. It's kind of thick. Mm -hmm. I don't usually use that many of the puree, much of the puree, but the puree, but I wanted it to be. My brothers have arrived. Hello. But the whole point is that it's supposed to be um, a red drink. So I wanted it to be more red than lemon, you know, than, yellow, than lemonade color. So it's all good that it's, um, that it's, you know, that it's more red. So it's cool. Okay, so may as well finish the last of this. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh yeah. Over ice, this is gonna be bomb, y'all. So we have our lemonade. Our strawberry lemonade. So we have our red drink. Drank. So I'm gonna pour it right into our picture here. And look how fresh that is. Now if you wanted to, you could easily add, you could make this alcoholic if you like, and put a little, you know, wine spritzer, and you could put some vodka in it if you wanted to. Oh, man. You know, if you wanted to make it alcoholic. It can be a taste, right? Huh? It can be a taste. No. <laughs> <laughs> like a, just a mixed drink. Yeah. And then, this, you can also, if you wanted to make it sparkly, you could just add some lemon, lime soda, Sprite. Okay. You could add ginger ale. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. ginger ale yeah. We're gonna pour this over ice 
and this is going to be awesome, y'all. So look, we are going to show you the finished results in a minute. We'll show you our full table, you know, with everything on it, and we'll get you some close-ups of the mac and cheese, my mom's cornbread, her collard greens, all that good stuff in a minute. We will be right back. See you soon. Everybody, we are back. Mom's greens came out nice and tender. Mama, are they the way you want them? Deliciously wonderful. <laughs> Deliciously wonderful, y'all. <laughs> wonderful, delicious, high Yay. And then I told you we were making some green beans. And then I just wanted you guys to see all that pull on that mac and cheese with that cream sauce. It's nice and creamy. Yummy. And we'll show you everything once we get to the table and everything that's all plated. Oh, mom's cornbread. Cornbread, cornbread, cornbread. Look how beautiful and fluffy that cornbread is, y'all. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, turn it. Do -do -do. Mom said, turn it, turn yeah, it, turn it. That yeah. yeah, there you go. And that's the texture you want it. See the crumb on there? Beautiful. And then the strawberry lemonade. I just added a garnish with uh, fresh strawberries and I put some fresh lemon in there. And it's so yummy, so delicious. So y'all, that's the show for today. Thank you for watching. I hope that you create some wonderful memories with your families next week for Juneteenth. And uh, we're about to dig in because we are all very hungry. So we will catch you guys later. The recipes will be on the blog. Uh, please watch, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. We're going to eat. Deuces. Ciao. <laughs> hey, guys. So we are, I don't know where I'm supposed to be looking, but anyway, we are um, about to partake, and I'm going to show you our spread. Here we go. All right. So. True to Juneteenth and Juneteenth fashion, we have bourbon barbecue chicken that I marinated in buttermilk, Cajun seasonings, garlic, onion powder, uh, garlic, and I also made an orange marmalade chicken, also soaked in buttermilk with orange, marm uh, orange marmalade, honey, a little Dijon mustard. We have the greens, the mac and cheese. Oh, mom. Potato salad. That's in the oh, fridge. We'll yeah. grab that too. Mm -hmm. And then my brother and I are having, this is my plate, we are having smothered pork chops and fresh green beans. And then down there, Greg, show your um, salad. Mm -hmm. And then my mother said they always had like a little, um, you know, just to kind of, because everything is so heavy, but then my aunt always made like, a, uh, my great aunt always made like a little um, tomato cucumber salad. Mm -hmm. Just to have something nice and fresh to eat, too. So, let me grab that. You can come with me, y'all. Let's grab that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That potato salad. Because my mother's like, you've got to have potato salad when you eat greens. Right, Mom? Mm -hmm. So, we'll put that over there. So, they can dig into that. And that's all, folks. That is our spread. And we also, in true Juneteenth fashion we also have watermelon and I told you that we also have ta -da, coconut pies so that's our spread y'all we got to eat bye